I'm so glad we're here today in the house of the Lord one more time. Come on, let's just praise him for being present and accounted for in the house of the Lord on this great Sunday. Amen. I want to get a few things out the way as we move forward in our worship experience prepared for the word of God. I want you to be mindful that uh, we want you to continue to give your tithes and offerings. Please uh, do it electronically if you can. Just go on our website. TBIC Jacks and click on the Give Now button at the top of the screen, top left, or use the GiveLify app and give your tithes and offerings. Also, if you're here, uh, we have envelopes and you can just place them in the offering box that's hanging on the door that says tithes and offering, uh, but we will not make the traditional uh, pass by passing up the plate or, or walking around uh, the church. So please uh, do as the Lord has prospered you to do so by blessing the house of God. I also want you to be mindful that uh, next Sunday is fourth Sunday, Palm Sunday. We're looking forward to that. And then after that, the next Sunday, first Sunday in April is Easter. God willing, the weather permitting, we will be outdoors for Easter Sunday. Uh, looking forward to that. We're just praying that the weather would be nice, uh, the, the timing would be right, and we'll have to keep you posted on that as we could get closer to the time. If the weather is not permitting and God's not willing, we will be right here in the house of the Lord. Amen. And so we're hopefully we'll be outside. We're hoping to try to do something for our young people if we're able to be outside. But we'll uh, know that uh, certainly uh, next week sometime after uh, fourth Sunday. Also want to encourage you lastly to go online if you haven't registered. We first thank God for all of you who have already gone on and registered yourself and your family to take your uh, color craft family portrait. You get a free 11 by 17 portrait. Doesn't cost you anything. You can take it by yourself. You can take it with your family. Uh, we want you to do it so that you have a current picture of yourself or your family uh, and have it for our church records as well. Uh, one of the pictures I looked at um, 
our son who's now this tall. On the other picture, he was that tall. And so it's certainly time for us to do it again. And so we want to encourage you, please uh, go online on the website and uh, register for your appointment on Saturday. They will be here Easter Saturday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. the Saturday before Easter. And we hope you're able to join us. I want you to continue to pray for all of our sick and shut in and those who are going through difficult times, those who are going through hardship times. Just, just pray for your church family. Pray for your church, uh, your pastor and your loved ones as we pray for you. Let us pray for one another. Amen. There's a word from the Lord we want to share today and found in the New Testament in the book of Mark chapter 10, uh, verse 32 through 34. And then the last, we're going to drop down to verse 45, Mark chapter 10. Verse 32 through 34, as well as verse 45. Giving honor to the word of God as the people of God did in the days of old, they would rise to their feet at the mere reading of the holy word. For even Jesus quoted the scripture, and the Bible said after he had quoted the scripture, he himself sat down. So the word stood up to read the word, uh, to say, speak the word, and then the word uh, sat down. So we give honor while we can to stand and give God honor in his word. Hear what the word of God says in the New King James Version. You read along in your version and God will get the glory. For it says, now they were on the road going to Jerusalem. And Jesus was, was going before them. And they were amazed. And as they followed, they were afraid. Then he took the twelve aside again and began to tell them the things that would happen to him. Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priest and to the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles, and they will mock him and scourge him and spit on him and kill him and the third day he will rise again verse 45 says for even the son of man did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many this is the word of God for the people of God father in the name of Jesus with these words before our eyes, ears, and hearts, we ask now for the help of your Holy Spirit to bring them to life in our lives. Speak to our hearts, God. Speak to our minds. Speak to our soul, dear God. Speak to the enemy who seeks to kill, steal, and destroy. Father, we're asking for the help of your Holy Spirit that we would not leave this house, leave this place like we came, God. But we would leave enlightened, empowered, excited about what you're doing in our lives. So have your way today, God. Have your way in this place. Have your way in our hearts and minds. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh among these, thy people who are watching and who are standing before us today. We ask a special blessing upon all who will hear your word, but would also become doers of your word. In Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. It says in this text, Behold, we're going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed. He will be condemned to life, to death. They will mock him. They will whip him. They will spit on him, and they will crucify him. And the third day he will rise again. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. I want to preach this morning with the thought in mind, journey to Jerusalem. Journey to Jerusalem. The Bible says that we should seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things we need and we pray for, we ask for, shall be added unto us. But it says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And brothers and sisters, I'm convinced that today more than ever, we all have a tendency, tendency to seek first for ourselves and not seek first the kingdom. 
we seek first for ourselves, but, but part of following Christ, part of fully and completely following Jesus means that we must be willing to live as Christ lives. Many of us, uh, saved and unsaved, have called out ourselves and demonstrated ourselves as Christians, saved and unsaved. We come to the cross, uh, we wear the cross on, as a banner. We wear it around our necks as if I have one, on my finger as a ring. So we wear it as earrings, as jewelry. Some wear the cross on, on their shirts, on their clothes, on their t-shirts. and Some wear, uh, carry them around on their favorite drinking cup, coffee cup. They got the cross here and there. And then those are others who would take off their shirts and, and, and show you a tattoo of the cross that they have on their sleeve or their shoulder or their back or their chest. Uh, and I'm just convinced while many uh, have the cross, there are many who are not willing to pick up the cross. And today's culture has successfully trivialized the cross by not having the true meaning and understanding and the value of what it represents. Wearing a cross uh, would be equivalent to you wearing a, a, an electric chair around your neck, tattooed on your chest, or dangling from your ears. The, the cross represents, uh, in the Old Testament, the cross was nothing but a symbol of violence, heartache, shame, and pain, and suffering. And in the beginning of this message, in, in this passage, Jesus was just once again sharing and predicting the death that lies ahead of him and that is soon to come. He doesn't say it explicitly in this passage, but we know he's speaking about his death on the cross. He says the, man, the son of man uh, will be killed and we know that he was crucified on the cross. But he also says, and on the third day, he will rise again. In this text, Jesus and his disciples departed Capernaum and headed towards Jerusalem for the last time. Jesus is telling them for the third time, I'm getting ready to leave here. I'm getting ready to depart here. I'm getting ready to lay down my life for mankind. He tells them that, he shows them that, and on this journey to Jerusalem, he, he, he leads them there. And he leads them there in such a way that they are in awe of him. They're in awe of him because he's already told them, I'm going to Jerusalem where they're going to beat me and spit upon me and whip me and kill me. Yet he went courageously and boldly in the name of God. And they are in awe by this, this power to face death. They're in awe by his willingness to go forward and lay down his life. They're in awe of him. And then yet some are afraid, the Bible says. Some that followed were afraid that what happened to him might happen to them. And so, brothers and sisters, as we come to this text, I want you to know that with this journey to Jerusalem is a journey that we're all called to make today. We're all called to make this journey to Jerusalem because we all want the kingdom life that God commands us. He desires for us. We all have this desire to live the kingdom life, not just in heaven, but I don't know about you, but I want the kingdom life here on earth. The Bible declares the Lord will establish us as a holy people to himself. Just as he sworn to you, he says, if you keep his commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, he tells them that then all the peoples of the earth shall see you who are called by the name of the Lord and they'll be afraid of you. In Deuteronomy 28, he lets them know that, that, that the Lord will grant you plenty that the Lord will open up the good treasure and bless you from heaven. That the Lord will bless all the works of your hands. That you would be the head and not the tail. That you would be the lender and not the borrower. That you would be above and not beneath. God desires that for us on earth. He wants us to walk in a life of peace. He wants us to live in peace. He wants us to live in prosperity. He wants us to live empowered. He wants us to live in purpose. 
But in order to live the kingdom life here on earth, we've got to be willing to make the journey to Jerusalem. See, the journey to Jerusalem is one where it reveals in this text that three things that Christ uh, emphasized and, 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 and shares with us that we must be willing to do as well. If you're going to get to the promised land, if you're going to get to live that life here on earth where you have peace that pass of all understanding, where you have joy, unspeakable joy in your life. Where you're not in fear of anything other than the reverend God. Where you are, are, are clothed and in your right mind and living the true authentic life that God purposed you to live. Brothers and sisters, today I'm convinced that too many of us who are Christians are living beneath and not above. We're living as the tail and not the head. We're living not in peace, but we're living in trouble. We're living not in power, but we're living in weakness. We're living not in purpose, but we're living in just foolishness. We've got to realize that there's a journey we must make to Jerusalem. Christ made the journey to Jerusalem to face uh, death, to face uh, his purpose, to face the calling that God placed on his life. And we are called to that same journey. And there are three things I want to share with you today. To let you know that if you want to really live the kingdom life on earth, if you really want to uh, uh, speak those things that be not and watch them come to pass, if you really want to be able to have that kind of power to, 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 to speak those things that be not and watch them come to pass, if you want to be the kind of person to ask in the name of Jesus and wait for it to happen and watch it happen, if you want to be one of those kind of people who can tell the devil, get thee behind me, Satan, and watch him flee, if you want to be one of those kind of people, you've got to be willing to make the journey to Jerusalem. And the journey to Jerusalem represents three things that Christ emphasizes. And first thing Christ emphasized that we all must be willing to face and do is uh, you got to be willing uh, to, to deal with suffering. Because in this text, we find that Jesus, he was going to suffer. He knew he was going to suffer. For the Bible says uh, they're going to mock him. They're going to scourge. That means to flog. That means to take a whip and whip him. They used to put glass, shards of glass tied in the, to the lather strap. So when they whipped, it would snatch off the flesh from the body. He knew that he would be mocked and whipped. And then, of all things, which is one of the worst things somebody can do, he was going to be spit upon. And then he says, and they will kill me. They're going to, he says, they're going to condemn me to death. They're going to betray me. And I'm just believing you have not suffered until somebody you love betray you. That's a painful, painful thing. And Christ knew that someone would betray him. Some would betray him. They would condemn him. They would lie on him. They would mock him. They would whip him. They would belittle him. And they would spat upon his body. And he has, lets us know that he knew he would suffer going to Jerusalem. And brothers and sisters, I'm here today to tell you that we've got a generation today. Uh, a suffering just means there's us a troubled state of feeling of pain. It's a troubled state of pain, distress, and difficulty or hardship. And pain can be physical, mental, emotional, psychological, uh, spiritual pain. We, we all must be willing to, to suffer in the name of Jesus. We must be willing to suffer to live the kingdom life. you got to be willing to... How many of y'all know doing the right thing is not always the popular thing? Doing the right thing is not always the easy thing. Doing the right thing is not always the most comfortable thing. Doing the right thing is not the most immediately rewarding thing. But we must learn to endure hardships and difficulties and pain and distress uh, uh, for, for the right things. We must learn to face and endure that which is hard, that which is uncomfortable, that which is unpopular, that which is even unusual to live the kingdom life where you live in peace, power, purpose, and prosperity. We must be willing to endure, but brothers and sisters, I'm convinced we have a people today, parents and children, who don't want to suffer anything. 
They give up and give out at the, at the, at the slightest pain, at the slightest, slightest level of discomfort. And I want to tell you, if you're going to have live the kingdom life, if you're going to live in purpose, you've got to be willing to deal with some things that are not easy, that are not comfortable, that are not always painless. The life we live today, the lives that God wants us to live might require us to do something that we're uncomfortable with. He says, love your enemies. You might not be down with that, but he says, love them. Pray for those who, you know, persecute you. He, he lets us know there are some things that we must be willing to suffer, endure. Uh, and listen, if you're going to live the kingdom life, you've got to be willing to have some people you like and love leave you. Because everybody, listen, everybody can't go where God is calling you. But sometimes we don't want to leave them, but you've got to be willing to suffer the, the hardship or the pain of missing being in the midst of the crowd, of missing being at the happening spot, of missing being uh, in the middle of what's going on. You've got to be willing to be alone with Christ and all right with that. You've got to be willing to stand alone with Christ. Hebrews 26 tells us it was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to suffer affliction and share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. He thought it was better to suffer for the sake of Christ than to own, to own the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking ahead to his great reward. And brothers and sisters, that's what we must be willing to do when, when we're called to suffer, uh, to live in the kingdom life, to call the suffer, to live in the Christ, Christian life. We must be willing to look forward to the reward. For the Bible says, uh, don't grow weary of doing good things for in due season, your harvest going to come. Don't stop. Don't grow weary of doing the right thing. Don't grow weary of giving your tithes and offerings. Don't go grow weary of doing the right thing, of loving those who don't love you back. Don't go grow weary of forgiving those who continue to hurt you. Don't grow weary of doing good. We've got to be willing to endure. Second Timothy says, if we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. James 5.11 says, indeed, we count them blessed who endure. You have heard, the per heard of the perseverance of Job and seen the end, of, uh, end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. Listen, I'm telling you, some people are, are listen, I, I've learned a long time ago, if you're going to live the kingdom life financially, you've got to be willing to suffer through some things today. You can't buy everything that everybody else is buying. You can't even have the cable that cable service that some other people have. If you're going to get to where God is calling you, you got to do what God is calling you to do. And some of us don't want to do without. And some of us don't want to do anything that causes us a little discomfort or hardship. But if you're going to get to the kingdom life, you got to be willing to suffer. you got to be willing to deal without. I don't know about you, but uh, I, I found out uh, if you really want to be able to give your tithes and offerings, if you really want to have more money uh, uh, to help somebody else, then you've got to be willing to do some things today to enable you to do greater things tomorrow. We've got to be willing to suffer because Christ suffered on his way to journey to Jerusalem. He knew he would suffer. And if you're going to get to the promised land, if you're going to get to that kingdom life, you're going to have to deal with some suffering in your life. First Peter says this, but even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you are blessed. For it is better to suffer for, the, for doing good than for doing evil. Listen, if you suffer because you're doing right, listen, if, they, if they quit you, if they leave you because you're doing right, you're blessed for that. You're blessed for that. If you're suffering because you're doing what God is calling you to do, if you're suffering because you're going where God is calling you to go, you're blessed for that. For it's better, he says, to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. Suffering comes from, uh, uh, comes before your glory. I don't know why these young people don't today, they, they, they want everything that the parents have, not realizing that parents suffered through some years. 
They didn't always have a three-car garage. They didn't always have a walk-in closet. They didn't always have a wash and dry in the house. They didn't always. But today, these children want what the parents have and others on YouTube have and Facebook have, but they're not willing to go through what they went through to get what they have. Everybody wants instant, instant success, instant fame, instant fortune. But you must understand suffering comes before glory. There's no cross. Listen, if there's no cross, there's no crown. We must be willing to, to be, listen, we can't be wimpy Christians going through this life. We must know that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. For we are more than conquerors. Come on in, Holy Spirit. <laughs> we must be willing that, well, listen, we got to teach our children as our parents taught some of us my age. Eh, baby, it's not going to be easy up in, uh, up in here. On the job. In the workplace. My, my mama helped me to understand. You will never get everything you deserve. But everything you get, you would have earned it. That helped me. Because you will deserve a lot more, but, but on the job, you might not get it. On the, in the home place, you not, might not get it. In the world, you might not get it. But baby, what you do get, you probably, you pretty much earned that. So you got to understand, no cross, no crown. Be willing to suffer. Be willing to do the hard part. Be willing, be willing to, uh, I'm going to help somebody. Uh, listen, if you want the kingdom life, to be paired with somebody in marriage and you're not married now, then you got to be willing to do what Christ is calling us to do. you got to go through the uncomfortable uh, part of being willing to love again, to trust again. You've got to be willing to open the door. Listen, I told somebody, if you build a wall to protect your heart, it will protect your heart, but no love can get out, no hurt can get in, but no love can get out either. And no love can truly get in. So Christ says we got to be willing to suffer. The second thing he helps us to understand in this text is not only did, would he suffer, but he, he helps us to understand if you're going to uh, live the kingdom life, you got to be willing to make the journey to Jerusalem. And the journey to Jerusalem includes sacrificing. In this life, brothers and sisters, you've got to learn to sacrifice. To sacrifice means the surrender of something for the sake of someone else. A sacrifice is a loss or something you give up usually for the sake of a better cause. A law sustained in the accomplishment of or as the result of something. And, and we do it for some people, for parents. Uh, sometimes we uh, sacrifice time and sleep to take care of sick children. And sometimes kids make sacrifice uh, of their time to spend time with their parents. It's a sacrifice for some of them. Though no longer used only in religious context, sacrifice comes from the Latin word meaning to perform sacred rites. And we know that Jesus is the Lamb of God and he is the ultimate sacrifice. But we who must make it, who wants to live the, uh, uh, the kingdom life, we got to be willing to make some sacrifices in this life. We must be willing to sacrifice for other people. We must be willing to give up some things. We must be willing to give up some of what we have to bless God and bless others. We keep thinking if we give to others, we will have less. But if you have seeds, if you plant seeds, you know, if you put the seeds in the dirt, if you take and give them away and place them in the dirt, after a while you have more than the seeds you put in the dirt. We must learn that we must be willing to sow seeds in fertile soil so that we can have more that will come from the harvest. The Bible says you reap what you sow. And we got to realize in this life, we must be willing to give, not out of our abundance, but out of our need. If you're going to live the kingdom life, you must be willing to sacrifice that which you have and, and that which is of value. Sacrifice your time. Sacrifice your, ta excuse me, your talent. Sacrifice your treasures. We must be willing to do without, to bless somebody else, to bless the house of God, to bless God himself. We must be willing to sacrifice because that's what Jesus did. He sacrificed. He was giving of his life. He was crucified for us. He died. He gave his hands to the nails. He gave his blood to the earth. He gave his breath to the world. He gave his all. 
that we might have life. We must do as Christ did and give of ourselves to lift others, to lift the church, to lift and watch God send the flood to our lives, to float our boats. You, you must understand if you're all about getting and not about giving, you, your pockets will always have a hole. There will always be some appliances going out in your life. There will always be, listen, God has a way. If you don't want to give it, I'll fix it so you got to spend it somewhere. Another flat tire, won't he do it? <laughs> he has a way of getting our attention. First King, second, 17 chapter, Elijah and the widow uh, with the last little flour and oil to feed her and her son the last meal during the famine was going to fix it and die. But the Elijah prophet said, fix me a little something too and then fix y'all something. And she gave out of the little she had and as a result of giving out a little she had to Elijah, which represented God, the presence of God, she gave a little bit. She didn't have much. She didn't have much at all. She just thought this was her last, last meal for her and her son. She gave out. See, some of y'all are waiting until you hit the Powerball to give. Some of y'all are waiting until you hit the uh, Florida Lottery to give. And we're going to be waiting until uh, uh, Resurrection uh, Day when Jesus come back. Some of y'all are waiting to, to the increase. But God has us to understand, you must be willing to sacrifice out of where you are right now she sacrificed out of her lack of of what she had and so we must understand in order to live the kingdom life brothers and sisters that Christ sacrificed he gave to bless somebody else if you want to live the kingdom life you got to learn to uh, sacrifice give of what you have to bless somebody else give of your time to somebody else's child Give of some of your talent to help somebody else accomplish their goal. Give of what you have of value, your time, talent, and treasure to sacrifice it. Give it up. Not, see, the sacrifice, you give it without an expected return. Otherwise, you're just trading off. I'll loan you $5 this Friday. You loan me $5 next Friday. No. Give. Make a sacrifice to bless somebody else. Because that's what Christ did. The third thing he reveals in this text, not only was he about suffering and sacrificing, but he was about serving. If you really want to live the kingdom life, you got to know he was about serving. He said, for the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve. Jesus often called himself the son of man, which implies his humanity. He was human. He, he was God in the flesh, yet he was human also. And Jesus being the son of man means that he is the, the leader of all mankind. He is the son of man in addition to the son of God. He's the son of man. And, 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 and what you must understand, he, he, he is leading us. And he, but in order to lead, he lets us know, because many of us want to lead, but you can't leave until you learn to serve. The problem too many of us have, we, we, we don't want to serve anybody. We just want to be served. We want to be in charge, but we don't know how to be under somebody's charge. Unless we know how to obey orders, we do not have the right to give orders. And some of us got to learn in order to live the kingdom life here, you got to learn how to submit to authority, submit to those who are over you, and, and, and learn before, uh, uh, before you exercise authority, you must learn to show what it means to be under authority. I can't tell you how many people, young people are going to work today trying to tell the company what they are not going to do. Disrespecting the supervisor, the manager, the, the, the employer, the HR department, the same job you beg God for. The same job you, yeah, I can work on weekends. I don't matter just what time, whatever y'all want me. Now, now we can't get you to do what they're asking you to do. And we must learn Christ was about serving mankind. He was about being under the authority. And if you want to be in authority, you got to learn how to be under someone's authority. In order to live the promised life, brothers and sisters, I'm convinced that more of us have to learn how to serve somebody else. Too many people get married and want to be served and, and don't realize marriage is a ministry of service. You must come to that altar saying, I want to serve you. It's about, I, I got so much love, I want to give you. I want to be, I want to be a servant. I want to show you what a good husband looks like. I want to show you what a good wife looks like. I'm coming to the table because I have something to give. 
But too many times, we Janet Jackson to everybody, what have you done for me lately? What kind of money, what bills are you going to pay before I even say, what, what, how much do you make? Uh, I, I, and not, you're not going to say what you can and can't cook. You just want to know how much the brother makes. Help me, Holy Ghost. Be careful what you ask for. Because if, if you give somebody a list, they might give you back a list. Amen, somebody. Like many people today, the disciples were making the mistake of following the wrong example. Instead of modeling themselves after Jesus, they, uh, too many of them were admiring the authority of others. That's why they were jockeying for positions. James and John were trying to be, be, yeah, let, let me be at the right hand and the left hand. God, let, let, let us get the right positions with you. And brothers and sisters, Christ was not about position. He says, if you want to be the greatest, then you got to be willing to serve. And serve, listen, we must, believers must always be willing to become servants. And that's something we learn and develop. You, you, you got to develop a servant spirit. And I can tell you, when you get there, you'll know you're there. See, when you, this is how you, know, this is a, a litmus test of how you know you are truly, you truly got a servant spirit. When somebody treats you like a servant and it doesn't bother you, then you know you have grown to that level. You have graduated. But let somebody treat you like, I don't know who she thinks she is. I don't, she's your supervisor. That's who she thinks she is. We must be willing to serve, which means we must be willing to be under authority. Je, 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 Jesus was making the journey to Jerusalem knowing that he would, he, it was about serving and suffering and sacrificing. But he knew that on the third day, he knew that there, he knew the reward was to come. He knew that there, on the other side of this suffering is a resurrection day. On the other side of this sacrificing is a resurrection day. On the other side of, uh, uh, of the serving is a resurrection day. And brothers and sisters, we must have that foresight. To live now, to be willing to serve, suffer, and sacrifice, knowing that our resurrection Sunday is coming, our harvest is coming, our breakthrough is coming, our miracle is coming, our blessing is coming. We must serve knowing that in due season, God's going to show up and show out. Anybody here know he'll show up and show out if you just keep doing what the Lord is calling you to do. Keep serving him. Keep worshiping him. Keep sacrificing in his name. Keep being willing to endure suffering in his name. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is making the trip to Jerusalem knowing he's going to die. He doesn't go timidly. He doesn't go dreadfully. He goes boldly because he knows that after I go through this, I shall come out as pure gold. I shall have all power. He says, all, afterwards, all power is given. He says, all power is given unto me. And brothers and sisters, we must have that same foresight. We must look to the hills which come without help and realize it's not about living for today. It's about living for what is to come in the days. We must prepare ourselves for the kingdom life we want to live. You'll never wake up in the kingdom life you desire if you're not willing to do as Christ did starting today. We're in the season of, sacrifice, uh, season of prayer and fasting during Lent, and this is a perfect time to make up your mind, to be willing to make the journey to Jerusalem, to be willing to do the hard stuff that a lot of us don't want to do. Why, women who want to be wives but can't humble themselves under some other man. I work just as much as you do. I put on my pants like, just like he does. I'm just saying what the word says. He shall have rule over you. That's what the word says. Somebody's got to be in charge. Because anything with two heads is a monster. So God chose man not because he's the smartest, show enough to cut, not because he's the brightest. God knows it's not because of that. <laughs> Because we've proven that, brothers, we've proven that over and over. It's like, I can't believe he think that. <laughs> he chose for his reason. To, he said, man, shall have, your husband shall have rule over you. But you want to be a wife. No, you want to have a wedding. You don't want to be a wife. 
brother, you want to be a, you want to have a wedding. You don't want to be a husband. Because he said, love your wife as Christ loved the church. He gave everything he had. He suffered and sacrificed. He served. He did everything for his bride. So when he comes to the altar, he must come declare, I'm willing to give you everything I got. I'm willing to serve, suffer, and sacrifice. That's what Christ put before us. But you're not, you just want somebody who can cook and lay down. Amen, somebody. You, 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 just, you just want what's in it for you. But the journey to Jerusalem is about what you're willing to endure. Are you willing to endure suffering, sacrificing, serving? Because if you're not, you'll never live the kingdom life that God put before us. Amen? Come on, let's just praise the Lord right there. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I want, I, want, I, want, I want the kingdom life in heaven, but I want it even more down here. I want to walk with peace, live in peace, live in power, live in purpose, and certainly live in prosperity. Because God wants that for all of us. But we must be willing to be more like Jesus in such a way it will come to pass in our lives. Stand to your feet, church. Ask yourself today, am I willing to make the journey to Jerusalem? Am I willing to endure to do the hard part? I tell my children, listen, everybody would do it if it was easy. Easy is C Street. C Street, that, to get a, the C, the average, amen? Average is not, there's nothing average about Christ. We are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. He commanded us to have power and dominion over this place. He equipped us and gave us an example of how to live with that kind of power. But we got to be willing to make the journey to Jerusalem. There is no crown without a cross. You must be willing to pick up your cross and fully commit yourself, fully surrender yourself to live the Christian life. Pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, your word helps us to ask, to understand that we have not because we ask not. And then when we do ask, we ask amiss. We're asking for the wrong things. We're not asking how to be more faithful. We're not asking... Or faithful. We're not asking how to be, how to serve more. We're not asking how to endure more. We're not asking how to succeed under your terminology. We're asking for the worldly's terminology of success, materialism, where we're self-centered and selfish, and it's all about what we want and less about what you want from us help us God today to leave this place turning the tables around to ask you instead of asking you asking us what, are, what do we want let us turn the tables and ask God what do you want me to do with the rest of this time you've given me on earth what do you want me to do with the, the health and life that I have right now what do you want me to do with the love and the, the, the prosperity that you've already blessed me? What do you want me to do? Because when we ask that question, we'll find God will respond to us. And that will lead us to a, living a successful life of obedience to his good and perfect will. God, we ask your blessings now upon all who hear this word that we not just be hearers but doers. If there's anyone unsaved without Christ and wants to live the kingdom life, God, let them be ones who would come forward, give their, come before the church and declare that I want to live the kingdom life. I want to be like Jesus. I want Jesus. 
let this be the day, God, as this new year 2021 begins a new decade, let this 2021 year be a year of newness in our lives where we're willing to do some new things in some new ways with some new, perhaps even new people in our lives. Bless us with the spirit of Christ today, we pray. Give us an earnest heart that's willing to suffer, sacrifice, and serve in the name of Jesus. This we ask, pray, and believe in the precious and mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together one more time. God bless you. We're so happy. So happy we have you here. Thank God for each of you. Remember, we'll be back here next Sunday, same time. We will be outdoors, God willing, for Easter Sunday two weeks from now. But in the meantime, let us go out these doors more committed to be willing to suffer, sacrifice, and serve so we can get to the promised land. Be willing to make this journey to Jerusalem. I promise you, there's a reward at the end of it. Because Jesus said, on the third day, he shall rise again. And on the appointed day, you too shall rise to the level God is calling you. Amen. And now, may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may he rest, rule, and abide with all of us upon our homes, upon our families, upon our traveling to and fro from this day forward, even forevermore. And all who believe say amen. Amen. Thank God.